Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi. Today, again, walking and talking on the beach here in Phuket, Thailand. Amazing beach in the morning. I'm a little bit later, nine o'clock, so it's a little bit more busy, a little bit more chance on booty on the beach, even a horse booty or a booty on a horse, however you see it. Uh, but, guys, uh, today, again, five amazing Bitcoin charts. A very handy trading tip, of course, a chart pattern also looking at some travel advice and of course some life advice and yes also looking of course at the news today because i read an article that's very interesting if you are interested in mining bitcoins guys now let's quickly jump into the first part the charts of today to see what the charts have to say are we going to go to 48k let's see bam First chart today, guys, of course, this beautiful four hour chart. Look how amazing, beautiful, a green pumping candle over there, guys. Uh, yes, breaking through that 42K uh, resistance. Of course, the huge resistance will be again at 44K. If I zoom out, you will see the volume profile on the right side. Those yellow bars there that we are trying to break is 44K. If we will break that, yes, 48K is the next target for me guys it's beautiful to see how that buy signal there in the bottom happened directly also at the bottom of that red area you see the buy signal we see the red area that's beautiful confirmation of taking that long guys if you look at the bam bam indicator also here we saw the blue line crossing that white line which is a very good indication and yes we were turning from blue and yellow to green guys so that's two beautiful confirmations of a long to take and what is the target of the long? The target of the long is of course at 44k level because that will be a huge resistance. Now let's zoom out and look at some way more important charts if it is up to me guys. Before I do that, I want to um, invite you to use the link down below the video to get the chance to win these exclusive prizes with the Bitcoin family and Bybit. So we have this new offer that is even announced on the Bybit official um, uh, channel now that you can get a 20 USDT airdrop you can win an iPhone 15 Pro. You can win a VIP membership to the Bitcoin family memberships, uh, to the Bitcoin v memory VIP membership. And you can even win some Bitcoin t-shirts out of our store. So now use the link down below uh, to go to that beautiful article. Yes, read it and use that link in that article to sign up to buy it or to claim one of these prizes, guys. Beautiful promotion from the Bitcoin family and Bybit combined. Now, this is the first chart that I'm going to zoom out. We can see two beautiful market caps on this chart. We can see the silver market cap and we can see the gold market cap. The gold is that gold line, the silver is that silver line. Now we can also see the trillion market cap. So that's a trillion market cap for Bitcoin. We reached that trillion market cap, of course, in the top of 2021. Now you can see now that we are nearing the trillion market cap again. I believe that this time we will not only break the trillion market cap, we will easily break silver's market cap as well. So Bitcoin will become bigger than silver in this bull market. Of course, the target is to break that gold market cap, then the Bitcoin price should almost be near the $1 million per Bitcoin. If we would reach $1 million per Bitcoin, guys, then we would even break the gold market cap. I don't believe we're gonna do this this cycle, but the next cycle, I'm not going to exclude the possibility that we will even overtake the gold market again. Silver, for me, is almost a 100% bet that we are going to break the silver market cap. That is just Bitcoin reaching a price of around 90k, something like that. If Bitcoin reaches 90k, bam, silver market cap gone. If Bitcoin will reach 900k, bam, the gold market cap also gone. So that's going to happen probably after this bull market. First, beautiful bull market pump into 2025, beautiful bear market into 2026, 27, 28, starting to go up again. And then, of course, again, a beautiful bull market in 2029. So maybe that 2029 bull market, we could reach that gold market cap already with Bitcoin. Because then again, six years of spot ETS will be in the market and that could propel bitcoin to these gold market cap heights guys beautiful chart pause it if you want to analyze it a little bit more then we have this chart i found on twitter beautiful chart that just shows you the amount of bars from the top 
um, till the bottom and again then from the bottom till the top. Every time, just like the chart that I've been showing you many times before, my own chart, it's showing you the same time again and again. The bottom is always taking 53 bars, sometimes 52 bars. It's almost always a year, the bear market. And then we get that bull market of around 150 bars. That 150 bars are ending somewhere in September 2025. Just like I've been sharing with you already for over a year, my bull market top is somewhere positioned in September 2025. A beautiful chart that agrees with the chart that I created already years ago. And that were the only two charts I want to show you today. You want to keep it a little bit short because it's very important for you guys to understand. Use all your spare capital, your savings, sell all your metallistic stuff that you don't use or see even because in your attic or in your garage and buy as much as possible Bitcoin at the moment before all the institutions will start to do that because that will be leading into a massive pump and then Bitcoin will probably become too expensive for you guys to accumulate. So do it now. I hope you really enjoyed the charts, guys. And yes, of course, always nice to see Bitcoin back above 43K. Yeah, quickly, hopefully soon also above 44K because that's the huge resistance that we need to break. But believe me, when we break 44K, guys, 48K is the next target that we are going to see. And yes, I really believe that we're not going to reach 50K, but 48K, definitely a possibility if we will be able to break the 44K level. But always, like always, zoom out and look at that bigger picture. Look at those charts that are very zoomed out. There is a halving upcoming in April 2024. That will be the moment that Bitcoin will be propelled to new all-time highs all the way up to that moment. You should be accumulating Bitcoin daily. If you earn extra salary, buy Bitcoin. If you're earning a Christmas bonus, buy Bitcoin. If your kids don't want presents for Christmas, but Bitcoin, do allow them to ask for Bitcoin. Give them Bitcoin for Christmas, which means a year later in Christmas, they will have doubled their amount and they can buy a shitload of presents back. So my advice for Christmas is give your kids Bitcoin. And our family, two kids asked, of course, for Bitcoin. It's the oldest ones because they now understand how Bitcoin is multiplying their capital. The youngest one, Jessa, still wants to have some presents as well, of course. Now, um, let's quickly jump into the trading tip. Turning around, guys, for the trading tip because the sun is reflecting too hard on the camera. Uh, in today's trading tip, we're going to talk about uh, two chart patterns. It's the falling wedge and the rising wedge. Both of them you can see now here on the image and you can see exactly what is the difference between the falling wedge and the rising wedge. It's not parallel lines coming down, but it's one line coming down and the other line is coming down a little bit more steeply. So you create this wedge. Now, when that happens, when we have an uptrend and we have this falling wedge forming, that is mostly a continuation of that pattern. So we're going up, we are having a correction and a falling wedge so, that the, so the price starts to move in between those two lines and getting smaller and smaller and then bam, we break out the upside. If we have a rising wedge, that's the opposite. So we have this pattern all the way to the top and the price is going up, 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 still smaller, smaller, smaller. That's mostly a breakdown of the market, guys. So yes, these two beautiful chart patterns are very handy, again, to see if there is a reversal or a continuation in the market. So there is a falling wedge and a rising wedge. The homework for today, guys, go and dive into the charts, not dive into the sea, but into the charts and find yourself a falling wedge, a rising wedge, and show yourself, indeed, that that was a beautiful breakout of the market or a pullback in the price, guys. So that is the homework for today, and that was the trading tip for today. We have a rising wedge and we have a falling wedge. Today's travel tip, guys, is a very handy tip when you want to save some uh, storage in your luggage. Uh, hopefully the wind is not like too disturbing, guys. It's really windy on the beach, but I'm not going to record this video again. So um, the luggage tip for today is instead of shampoo, uh, soap bottles or conditioner bottles, buy bars. You have shampoo bars, you have conditioner bars, you have all these kinds of bars that save a lot of space in the, and you can also use them longer than a shampoo bottle. I found out about these bars like I think a few years ago when we were traveling with backpacks and we were like, ah, these shampoo bottles always are breaking in the backpack because these backpacks are, are these soft bags. 
you put the shampoo bottle in and you open your backpack again at the next uh, destination and then bam, you know, all your clothes are full with the shampoo and all the shit. But that's not nice. So that is when I found out about these bars. These bars, you just soap it in your hands, you, you wash your hair. It's exactly the same effect, but they are smaller, they are lighter, they are more convenient if it comes to storing because they can't leak. So travel tip for the day is, if you don't want to have messy clothes, then use shampoo, soap, conditional bars instead of these bottles, guys. Now, that was the travel tip for the day, and the horse is nearing again, so let's jump into the next part, because I don't want the horse to attack me from behind. You never know. You no, no, it's a very nice horse. Now, let's quickly jump into the next part, guys. Morning. Morning. See you on YouTube. Oh, thanks for watching. <laughs> Have a nice walk. From Ook from Nederland. Yeah. Mooi. <laughs> uh, the news for the day, guys, is that Bitcoin miner Cyper is buying 37,000 Bitcoin miners extra worth 99.5 million US dollars to mine Bitcoins. They want to have them up and running in 2025, which brings them a full capacity of an extra seven tera hashes of Bitcoin mining. When these huge companies start to buy these newest end miners, you know they are renewing their hardware because they need to upgrade their hardware. Why? Because they know the halving will make them earn 50% less Bitcoins. And that is what they don't want. They want to have a lot of Bitcoins. So, or either they double the capacity of miners, so they still mine the same amount of Bitcoins, or the Bitcoin price needs to double so that they can still like make break even with all the fixed costs that they have, or they do double. They double their Bitcoin miners, like Cypher is doing now, for example, and they bet on the rising Bitcoin price, so they will have double the amount of revenue that they used to have. And they only do this when they really trust that Bitcoin is not going anywhere. Why else would you believe that a company is gonna invest an extra 100 million US dollars in miners? The only reason is because they understand that Bitcoin is here to stay. Bitcoin is not going away. Bitcoin is yours and my big term play. It's our pension fund. The same like it's the pension fund of all those people that are now going to buy Bitcoin as a spot ETF because I still believe this is going to be approved. All those spot ETFs are going to be approved in January 2024, exactly at the new start of the new year. A beautiful moment to open these spot ETFs for all those people with that shitload of liquidity all over there at financial advisors to send their part of their portfolio into Bitcoin spot ETFs to start 2024 with a beautiful fresh investment that will take them all the way up into 2025 and maybe even quadruple their investment because they invested in Bitcoin guys. And that is what these Bitcoin miners, these huge companies understand. They understand that mining will never go away. And that is why they take the risk to invest another 99.5 million US dollars in some miners. If you want to become an own miner, you can buy these end miners online. You just buy a single miner, put it in the electricity, hook up to a mining pool, and yes, you will be mining Bitcoin as well. So if you want to become a Bitcoin miner, just with a single miner, that's possible. The chance of you mining a full Bitcoin, of course, is not that huge, but you're still supporting the decentralization of the Bitcoin network. So mining is definitely not wrong. In this image, you can see all the different mining pools and you can also see that Bitcoin really is decentralized. And why is Bitcoin really decentralized? Look in which countries now worldwide Bitcoin is being mined. How many percentages in the United States, in Europe, all over the world, all countries are mining Bitcoin. And that is how a complete international decentralized store of value asset that you can use as peer-to-peer -peer cash looks like. And it's being mined worldwide equally in the same blockchain by multiple companies in multiple countries. That's completely different than every country having their each central bank printing their each amount of shit coins out of thin air. That is centralized centralized in the US, centralized in Europe, centralized in Africa. All these central banks are printing a shitload of shitcoins out of thin air without any connection in between, without anything backing them up. Bitcoin is really decentralized. 
check that image. That is because of these miners worldwide investing in these equipments to mine Bitcoin. Please start to understand that's a huge shift for many centralized economies of central banks that are just creating inflation all over the world individually by printing a lot of shit coins, now reforming to one centralized asset called Bitcoin that can be decentralized mined. Only one blockchain, the Bitcoin blockchain, that are multiple countries are now mining the new Bitcoins into this blockchain. Every day new Bitcoins are being mined all over the world in a decentralized way. Nobody can influence their mathematics. Nobody can influence their blockchain. Nobody can determine which country is going to mine that next block and earn that next 6.25 Bitcoins or from April 24, 3.125 Bitcoins. That is pure core decentralization. That is what we need to save the complete economic system in the world. We don't need decentralized entities anymore that print a shitload of shitcoins out of thin air. We need something universal, international, borderless, unconfiscatable, that can't be manipulated by governments or central banks. That's why we need a decentralized form of store of value slash asset like Bitcoin. Now, let's jump into the next part. For the next part, guys, again, turning around and walking into the shadow because it's bloody hot. It's really getting warm, guys. Um, the next part, of course, is answering the question of one of the followers. And the question now was, it wasn't like a question. It was like, he was like criticizing Bitcoin a little bit. He was like, Didi, what do you think if a billion people worldwide are going to transact on Bitcoin, on the Bitcoin blockchain, using Bitcoin? Don't you think the blockchain then will be clogged and the transaction fees will be so high that we can't use Bitcoin anymore? Don't you think there will be a new currency that will do it more efficient and throw over Bitcoin? It's a very good question or critic, but I don't believe that it ever will happen. For me, Bitcoin is king. For me, Bitcoin is the only decentralized. That's why I just told you that full story about the miners. All those pre-mined currencies are not decentralized. It's all out there. There is no energy, nothing being used to create the new tokens. All those proof of stake ones, I don't trust them as much as I trust uh, proof of work Bitcoin. I will do another video on what the difference is between proof of stake and proof of work, but that's why I, for example, like Bitcoin, because it's proof of work. And I also don't think that when a billion people are starting to transact Bitcoin, they will transact Bitcoin on the main blockchain. I think they will start to transact Bitcoin through the Lightning Network or through any other second layer solution that will be feeless. Like if I'm doing these small payments at stores or when people were doing these small pay payments at my uh, Bam Bam Beach Bar, they were using Lightning. They could buy a beer of $2 and don't pay fees. They could even buy an ice cream of $1 and not pay fees. That is why the Lightning Network was invented to these small payments using the Bitcoin blockchain. So that's a second layer application. Same like not everyone is using Ethereum to send to uh, tokens anymore, but for example, tokens that are built on the Ethereum blockchain because they are cheaper. Or Polkadot's blockchain or Solana blockchain. Man, I'm still even using Dogecoin to send transactions because that is one of the fastest and cheapest forms to send bigger amounts of transactions. All these possibilities are there, guys. So for me, in the far future, there is not going to be a discussion anymore between people. Ah, the Bitcoin blockchain is more expensive. Ah, the Ethereum blockchain is more expensive. Ah, this is more expensive. In the future, I think they will all be cross-chain integrated chains that you use to transact. So in the future, I think apps will automatically do all that difficult work for you. If you want to send Bitcoins from, from yourself to another person, probably the future wallets will automatically convert those Bitcoins into the Lightning Network, send them feelings to the other person and convert them there automatically back again uh, to Bitcoin. So you're sending Bitcoins, he's receiving Bitcoins, and the conversion and transaction is being done automatically by these new future apps. So people won't even notice anymore that their Bitcoins are first being wrapped into, for example, Bitcoin on Ethereum or being converted, for example, into the Lightning Network 
second layer solution of Bitcoin and then being sent to the receiver and then again being converted automatically. So the sender and the receiver don't see any difference. Only the way they will be transacted will be the difference. That's the same that like if you're sending money now from your bank account to whoever anywhere on the world, you don't even know how they do it. Do you know which blockchain they are using? Maybe in the future they will use that shitcoin Ripple. I don't like Ripple. Maybe you do like. Good luck. But you never worried about, hey, how is my money arriving at that other person's bank account? How are they doing this? What's the technology behind this? You never thought about that. You never worried about that. You didn't give a shit. You just wanted that money to arrive at the next person. And that's why you pay a shitload of banking fees, sending fees, monthly fees, yearly fees, negative interest fees, and all that shit. You never, you never worried about the technology behind it. And now we have this superb technology, a decentralized technology, a blockchain, that's making it possible for you to send 10 cents, or one dollar, or five cents, whatever you want to send, from your wallet to your nephew's wallet in Zimbabwe, or the Moluccan Islands, wherever you want to send them, without a fee, and now you start to worry <laughs> how they are doing it. Do you ever think about that? Why do you start to worry now? Now that we have the solution that is way cheaper than the banking system, you start to worry how they are doing it. That's the most stupid thing I've heard in the last decade. Everyone is attacking me on that. Yeah, but it's using energy. Yeah, but uh, it, it does cost fees. Yeah. You never thought about that when you used your shitcoins, euros and dollars, and now you start to use Bitcoin and you worry about that. In the future, we are, you, we are only getting started, guys. We are only getting started. Bitcoin started in 2009. We are not that old yet. Give it another five years and there will be apps and dApps that will be able to send Bitcoins all over the world to other people. They will be automatically converted into a layer that is very cheap for sending feel is and bam it will be there the user interfaces the simplicity of all the depths software that we are going to use to interact with each other is of course going to enhance as well in the future we are not going to sit down and wait that is the beauty of this whole industry people are thinking people are inventing people are creating more and more simple solutions by now you can use for example Noster, which is a social media client like twitter but then decentralized and you can send Satoshis to each other, almost feeless. When Twitter will integrate it, or X, you will be able to use your X account to send the Satoshis, Bitcoins, to each other, probably feeless. More and more, like these solutions will be created to maintain the freedom of spending, to maintain the freedom that you now have when you use cash. So, that was the answer to the question. A little bit long answer, wow, six minutes. But again, a very good answer if you ask me. Give it a thumbs up already. Now let's jump into the last part of the video. The last part, guys, is the inspirational part. And the inspirational part today, I'm gonna to try to keep it short because the other parts were already long, is um, when we are no longer able to change the situation, we are forced to change ourselves. And that's how it is. If you can't change the situation anymore, but you don't feel right by that situation, you need to start changing yourself so that you can adapt to any of these situations. We as a family, we experienced exactly that in the last couple of years. We couldn't change the situations of all those lockdowns. We couldn't. There was no possibility for me to call the president and tell them, hey, you know, it's all a fake flu. Um, you should unlock the country. Don't put it on the lockdown uh, and so that we can travel to you guys. We couldn't. And we would have loved to travel around the world and to beautiful countries. But we couldn't change that situation. The only thing that we could do at that moment is change ourselves. Change our expectations of the two years ahead of us. Okay, let's slow down. Let's go and be happy in those countries that don't have too many rules and restrictions. So let's go to Mexico, for example. Let's go back to Portugal, for example, and just hop in between of them because they don't give a shit about all those restrictions and limitations of people's lives. There we can still live this freedom life. So that's an example 
of a situation that we couldn't change anymore as much as I wished I could, but we adapted and we changed ourselves. We adapted our expectations of our travels to what was possible and we started to travel to those countries that gave us that freedom feeling that we always want to have. And I think that is very important in life that you understand that that is always possible. When you can't change the situation anymore, for example, of the Netherlands, the political situation, the taxation situation, any other situation that you might not agree with, if you can't change it, change your own expectations, change yourself and adapt to a new situation or pave a new road that you do want to walk on. Now that was everything for today guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, give the video a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment what did you think about the charts, what do you think about the news, what do you think about all the other stuff that I just was talking about. Thanks for watching, I wish you an amazing day, and see you again probably tomorrow. Yes, and probably again on the beach, hopefully again with some fresh booty out there. <laughs> oh my god, you're a sexist. Also manly booties. We also need men booties, not only women booties. Is that better? Is that a correction? And we also need them booties, they booties. How do you call them? Those that don't identify as a man or a woman. We also need those booties. So all those booties come to the beach to talk about Bitcoin, blockchain and life with Didi. Yes, booty, Bitcoin, blockchain. The most beautiful things on the beach. <laughs> that was a beautiful end. Now, thanks for watching and see you tomorrow again. Bye.